All right, so this is going to be a special one. Now, if you want to buy a phone in 2024, for most people, the sweet spot is around 30,000. We explained this well in this video. However, it's not that simple, which is why this video. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, 30,000. Give me this stuff now. Give me this stuff. Give me this stuff. Give me this stuff. Okay, brother, what do you want? IP68, uh -huh. good cameras, uh -huh. gaming, uh -huh. curved display. Let's say the other cons are loop. Now this is a very practical confusion. Poco X6 Pro or Moto Edge 40, Realme 12 Pro Plus or Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus or this phone at discount. So many brands, so many phones, but which is the best phone for you under 30,000? Well, that's exactly what we are going to find out. Now, fair thing, we have used all these phones in daily life and we have a dedicated video of this on the channel. You can watch those. And in this video, we'll be going which phone is best for whom. We are trying this new format, so let us know in the comment below if this is what you like. Like, if you want the phone with the best performance or in other words, the best gaming phone under 30,000, then hands down, that phone is Poco X6 Pro. It is selling for around 27,000 on Flipkart and for that price, it has killer performance. So you get the latest Dimensity 8300 Ultra CPU plus 8GB LPDDR 5X RAM and the base variant storage starts from 250 GB UFS 4 storage. Other phones in this range usually get UFS 3.1 storage. And we did run a few benchmarks like N22, 3D Mark, CPU throttling, you name it and every time the Poco X6 Pro scores better than the other phones in this list. And this even translates in gaming performance, COD, BGMI and all run without any issues. Even if you throw a heavier game like Genshin Impact, this is like the most demanding game on mobile and here too the phone worked like a champ. High setting, 60 FPS, there was no lag or anything. So for gaming and performance, hands down, this is the best phone at this price. But there are two things that I must mention. First, camera performance is below average. We click quite a few pictures and the skin tone here looked kind of off. Second, and this issue is with the company itself, the motherboard issue. In 2023, few Poco phones died after a software update, which is sad. But on the brighter side, the company did acknowledge it and they gave free replacement and extended warranty to the users. So that's a good thing. Number three, and this could be a smaller nitpicking, but the Poco X6 Pro doesn't have a physical proximity sensor. So see here, if I call someone and I do this natural movement, the display turns off. But see now, see, the display is still off. And sometimes while you're speaking on the phone and walking, the screen turns on automatically and it mutes the call accidentally, which is very annoying. So this could be a problem if you're someone who talks on the phone quite a lot. However, take it with a grain of salt. If you're still worried about buying a Poco phone and you need a phone for gaming, then you can also look into the iQOO Neo 7. It sells for around the same price at 28,000 and that is also a good choice. Now, not all of us play demanding games. Some of us just use our phones for watching videos, browsing the web, social media, taking phone calls, just, you know, chill. And if you're like me, the software experience is very important. Like we want a phone free of ads, no bloatware, plus extra software features. And in that regards, the Motorola H40 for around 26,000 is a really good phone. It has a clean Android experience. There are no ads or bloatware. And Motorola also has given many software features. Like you have ready for PC, so you can wirelessly connect TV to your phone. You get a new interface and everything. This is like an upgraded version of screencasting. No other phone in this list has this feature. Plus you also have secure folder. So see here, I can create another secret WhatsApp account and this will be locked. Also, the phone's performance is nice. In normal use, there's no lag or anything. Casual games run on it just fine. Also, it has IP68 rating plus wireless charging, which is just great. Now, the only thing to note for the Motorola H40 is the camera. During daytime, pictures look average at best. Also, Motorola promises two years of software update, which is good. But the phone launched in 2023 with Android 13. Meaning if you buy it now, you'll only get one more year of Android updates. And frankly, Motorola doesn't have a very good track record of giving you Android updates on time. So that's there. Now the best camera phone was actually very confusing. See, we have two phones in mind, the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus and the Realme 12 Pro Plus. Both of them have almost similar specs and both of them sell for around 30,000 rupees. But between them, I would pick Realme 12 Pro Plus. Two reasons. Number one is camera. See, the Realme has a 50 megapixel main camera, eight megapixel ultra wide and a 64 megapixel 3X periscope camera and that's something which you don't get in this price range. Whereas the Redmi has a 200 megapixel main camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel macro camera. So here in Realme you can pretty much take 1x, 2x, 3x, 6x photos and in practical life 3x optical zoom is much more practical than 200 megapixel plus Realme can also do in sensor crop and give a good 6x zoomed in photo. So the photos on the Realme are quite good like the color, sharpness, HDR and all is pretty nice. 
and number two, the biggest reason, software update. Realme comes with Android 14 right out of the box, whereas Redmi comes with Android 13. And both will get three years of Android updates, meaning Realme will now get one extra year update. The only thing with Realme is the software experience. Like there are quite a few bloatware, plus you get those hot apps, hot games. However, credit where due, last year, Realme software had inappropriate ads. That is not the case anymore. So software wise, updates and everything, they are moving in the right direction. And finally, let's talk about an all rounder phone. Very solid in most of the aspects. I'm talking about the Samsung S21 FE. Now this phone launched in 2022 with Exynos chip, but in 2023, this was re-released by Samsung with a Snapdragon 888. And this was launched for a price of 40, 45,000. And currently it is selling on Flipkart for 29,999. For that price, you're getting a good overall phone. Snapdragon 888 is a good chip. In normal daily uses, there is no lag or anything. Plus you can do a little bit of gaming. Like we played COD on this on medium settings and there was no lag or anything as such. Also, Samsung One UI is one of the best when it comes to software. You get Samsung wallet, secure folder, good luck mode. Like, all the Samsung features that you get on a flagship phone. Besides this, it also has a good camera. Like the pictures on this is nice, colors and all are pretty poppy, social media ready. Besides this, you also get wireless plus reverse wireless charging, which is always a good feature. That being said, the only thing is the charging speed is average. You get max 25 watt charging, which is slower if you compare with other phones in this list. And there's one key thing that you should know, software update. See, Samsung usually gives three years of software update, which is the case here too. But since the original S21 FE launched with Android 12 in 2022, we are guessing this will only get updates up until Android 15. So one more software update. So if you're okay with these two things, the S21 FE for 30,000 is a really good phone. So yeah, that was the list. Now I didn't talk much about build quality, speakers, display, battery and all of that because all the phones in 30,000 price segment have a good in-hand feel. Video watching experience is pretty solid. Plus all of them will easily last you one full day on battery life. So to sum up the entire video, if you want a good phone for gaming, go for Poco X6 Pro or iQOO Neo 7. Moto S40 has the cleanest software experience in this segment. And if you want the best camera phone, then Realme 12 Pro Plus is a fine choice. And if you just want a good all-rounder phone, the S21 FE does the job. Let us know in the comment section if we missed out on any phone and you are using it, write an in-depth review, we'll pin the comment and I'll see you in the next video. This is Pradeek signing off. Pew pew. Pew.